McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Traveling the world to prove that all car guys are the same. Regardless of where we live on the planet or what type of cars we love, the passion is the same. We're all just totally car crazy. It's about the hood. Crazy. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week, we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. <laughs> Our mission is pure and simple. <laughs> oh, that's right. We want to make you just a little more crazy. Hello and welcome in Modena and probably in the most important collection about Maserati cars in the world. That's right, Carlsbad. We get a lot of car guys in Carlsbad, Albuquerque, all the surrounding areas around us come in to, for this track right here. And then, of course, a birdcage Maserati. Yeah. They came from a birdcage family. Is the car? Is the all the birdcage family has this kind of chassis that the English people call birdcage, but in Italy we call it spaghetti chassis. <laughs> and now your host, Barry Maguire. Hailing from the speed capital of the world here in Modena, Italy, Matteo Panini is a wealth of knowledge regarding the history of Maserati. In fact, he and his dad are so crazy about the mark but they have the foremost collection of vintage Maseratis in the world. Along with his passion for cars, Matteo also owns a working farm that makes Parmesan cheese so good that it's the preference of the Pope. You're in for a real treat as we take a tour of Matteo's fascinating cheese factory, as well as his unbelievable collection of Maseratis in this enchanted area of Italy, so famous for its zeal for life and fast cars. As Matteo puts it, it is his Italian passion that makes him certifiably car crazy. Hi everybody and welcome to another special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy, part of this continuing series of shows that we're doing in the speed capital of the world here in Modena, Italy. And a very special guest will give us some insight from a little different perspective. Matteo Panini is one of the keepers of the history of Maserati, really. We have, we're surrounded here by some of the great cars that would have been lost had you not stepped in. And Matteo, I appreciate so much. Uh, Thank you very much. Hi. Hello and welcome in Modena and probably in the most important collection about Maserati cars in the world. It is indeed. And of course, we are sitting here in such atmosphere. We're in a barn. Yes. On your farm. I mean, yeah. a working farm. This is a, this is a museum. It's a private museum. But I'm very lucky because uh, this museum is a side to my business. I produce uh, uh, one of the most important cheese in the world, that is Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Let's talk about the Parmigiano just for a moment, because Parmigiana must come, if it's real Parmigiana, it must come from this region. Explain that. Yeah, the, the special. there is um, very strict rules that say that you live in this area and you have to use the milk that came from the cow who live in this area. The cheese need storage. We have to start the cheese two years. Help our viewers understand what it's like to live here, the relationship with the automobile, how it's just things that we would think at home were so spectacular, you take as, as just normal occurrences. I tell you, I think that for us is normal this. So if, you, if we decide to start a hobby, we start a hobby, but after three minutes, we know everything about this hobby, okay? Because we really like to do everything with the, the maximum of passion that you can do. Everything that we have here in Modena uh, is an um, example for food and cars, is in the maximum level of, uh, of manufacturers, okay? We are very lucky to live in this area, very lucky because uh, there is a very good people who can help you, and this is more important. When we come back, we'll hear more from Matteo Panini and find out some of the fascinating history of the exotic Italian mark, Maserati. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, right here on... Car Crazy! Car Crazy! Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy and our exclusive interview with Matteo Panini here in Modena, Italy. Let's, let's go back to that. You, yes. Your dad working for Maserati. Yes, he, he, was, headed in, up he was in the racing. motorcycle uh, factory that was another br branch of the factory. Modena 
and the Maserati, the factory, and you have seen the factory is in the downtown. Right. And because Maserati and the Orsi family, who were the original owners after the, Maser the Maserati brothers, need people with brine. <laughs> and they came in Modena. The Maserati brothers were dedicated to racing. Yes. Ended up with financial problems. So, so Adolfo Orsi, mm -hmm. his family, yes. they step in. He was an industrialist, yes. not really an automotive yes. guy. They, they, they decided to put some money in a, in a different kind of business. Mm -hmm. Okay, they had a um, different kind of business from uh, tractors, uh, machinery, to make casting, something mm -hmm. else, uh, train station, electric power. And they, in the past, they were a Fiat agency and they decide to buy Maserati, and they, sh they decide, but the, the Orsi period probably is the most important period, like for the racing, because they win uh, the Formula One championship with Fangio, and in this period you have an incredible car. Right. Like the car that is behind me, this mm -hmm. is the Dorado. Yeah, the El Dorado. They built only one for make only one race. In all the Maserati cars, you can find something that is very special. There was this, Parting the ways when uh, Adolfo Orsi decided to start making street yes. machines. This had nothing to do with, with Maserati. This was Orsi and his, yes. Yes. his business, different, 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 different business, different business yes. but put him into financial yes. difficulty. And the lawyers say, okay, from today, the racing department, stop. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they decided to build normal cars. The spirit of Maserati said, not normal car, <laughs> special car. Citroen had, was the owner for, for what period? Uh, Till 90, before 1980, 1978, 1979. Okay. And the Tomaso arrived after the Citroen. So then Di Tomaso ends up selling Maserati to Fiat. To Fiat. In, in what year? There was an agreement to say Fiat bought the 49% per, of the mm -hmm. Fiat mm -hmm. group, and this was in the early years of the 90. And in 1998, the Fiat both all the factory and the, the management was under the Ferrari group and the factory yeah. changed. Today you can buy a very good car and they start now to build the car with the original spirit of the Maserati Absolutely. brothers. Yeah. Today they know that it's Modena. Okay, it's inside the Ferrari group, but they, we, they can use the same energy to build cars. So the engine. Synergy is great, but there's still yes. two very distinct expressions. This is the problem. Uh, expressions. So they have to, to use this kind of spirit, yeah. okay? They have to think that built Maserati is not a Ferrari cars. Now I want to get to how the family Panini stepped in at the time when Di Tommaso was selling the, 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 the company Maserati to Fiat. There was this factory collection of Maseratis that was about to be lost or auctioned off. You stepped in. We're going to get to that great story right after this break. When we come back, we'll explore more of the colorful history of Maserati with Matteo Panini. And later, we'll go car hopping across America and around the world. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, right here on Car Crazy. Hey, hey, Barry, my ride is so sweet. Hop on over and talk to me. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. We're here at Area 51 Dragway in Roswell, New Mexico, and the owner and the manager of this great track is Chris Otero. Chris, I'm having a ball here tonight. It's an honor to have you guys on the ground. I'm... You know, when drag racing was just starting, this was the kind of feel we had back in those early days. And it's still happening across the area. Local drag strip. You bet. Back down to the basics, grassroots. It's a smaller program than the big cities. Just so you can have some fun, you can keep track of your local racer when you come out, and that's the fun in here. I, I love the big races. I mean, they're, they're exciting oh, yeah. or whatever. But you know what? This turns me on. Because <laughs> it's the little guy, and he's working on it. I was just in line with the concession stand, and this guy's out. I just hope I can break 16. Tonight, you know? <laughs> that's right. That's I, I right. think I have it right. Yeah. I don't know. He drove over here from a Carlsbad, New Mexico. That's right. Carlsbad. Yeah. We get a lot of car guys in Carlsbad. Albuquerque, all the surrounding areas around us come in to, for this track right here. Now the city actually owns the property, right? That's correct. But all, everything else we see here, this is all your operation. That's right, the rest is, is our, it's family run. 
my, my wife and myself and all our family. It takes all of us to put this together here. How long have you been doing this here? I got in the, in the junior drag. My son is a junior dragster about four years ago. And so we had some problems here in town with the track, and we had the chance to take it over. So I, me, my wife, and family stepped in, and we took it over so we wouldn't lose it. Junior drags, aren't they great? They're awesome. It's where, the, it's where the entry level, it's where it all starts for them. They get into the small car, and our goal is hopefully they'll step into a bigger car and keep drag racing. And that's part of NHRA? It is part of the NHRA program, Junior Dragster Challenge. All these cars will actually head up to Denver at the end of July to compete against divisions four, five, six, and seven in uh, Vandermeer. You see these kids going down that track, you know, they're hooked for life. That's right. It's, a, it's an <laughs> adrenaline rush. And that's our main concern is to keep them busy, yeah. keep them active, and Absolutely. give them something to do. Hey, there's a lot of people here tonight. That's Everybody's right. so thankful and having so much fun. Well, we appreciate all the racers, the city that's given us this nice place. They just resurfaced it. You know, they spent like 200000 on resurfacing it, so we would have it. They're, our city is interested in keeping drag racing alive. A lot of drag strips, local drag strips across the country. This right. is a normal Saturday night Saturday up night there weekend. all over America. You so you stand in, in the gap here tonight <laughs> representing all of us and say, come to your local strip and have a ball. That's right, support your local drag strip. Now that you never find, I come so fine as mine. Well, it's time to see how car crazy you are. What part is found on almost all cars, but is missing from an original Volkswagen Beetle? Is it a temperature gauge, defroster, glove box, or a radiator? How about it? Does this one bug you? <laughs> we'll find out the answer a little later in the show. When we come back, we'll find out how Matteo Panini was chosen to make cheese for the Pope. <laughs> you don't want to miss how this happened, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, right here on Car Crazy. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy and our exclusive interview with Matteo Panini here in Modena, Italy. Absolutely fascinating talking to you and Thank you. hearing all the pieces. We're only getting some of it on tape, unfortunately. Anyway, we're back to Di Tommaso selling Maserati to Fiat, but he kept the collection out of that sale. He kept some parts of the factory. He, he sold the factory like a box. No, One box was building, the second box was plants or machinery, another box was per parts and something like that. Last box was the historical departments. Fortunately, there was such a thing. Yes. That throughout the, the years, there had been some attention to yes, keeping some of these Because cars. Uh, we are very lucky. So when you see cars, and when you see that these cars in, were inside the factory, uh, nobody touched because it's the history. So the history is very difficult to touch. I don't know if you understand yeah, what I, I mean. I do, absolutely. There were engines and cars. Cars were uh, uh, 19 and some prototypes. The Fiat say, we are not interesting. I thought maybe the Tommaso kind of hit it or whatever. Fiat wasn't interested. And the Tommaso say, okay, I'm free to sell the car. You know, the Tommaso was, because now he's died, was a very good uh, businessman. He say, what is the best way to sell the car now? Auction. My father, the day after, say, we have to do for the city. Mm. We have to do for the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, an agreement with the Tommaso and with the auction, with the auction house. Mm -hmm. The car were in London. All the cars? All the cars. Shipped yes. off to London. Yes. And uh, at that point, the collection bought, was lost to, look, to We now. bought the box because we don't oh, see you the, the car. Whole box. <laughs> no, we don't see the car. The car were in England. We see only pictures. We're going to take a walk around with Matteo through these cars so you can show these cars up real close and personal so you can really appreciate how very special they are. Car crazy! So, Matteo, this is a 6CM? Yes, we are in 1936, and this is a really pre-war Maserati. What, what year we're talking 1936. about? 1936. The most important things of this car is that you have a very good technology characteristic, like the engine is totally made by magnesium. Very rich material, very light. Torsion bar in front for control the setup. Mm. We have hydraulic brakes, and they use the hydraulic brakes to give more safety to the drivers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a rare car, I know. Yes, this probably is the, my favorite cars, because we are in 1953. It's an A6 GCS Berlinetta Peninfarina. It's very small, <laughs> two doors, no roof. Four special customers ask to the dealer to have a roof for the rain, <laughs> for race. Two liters. Yeah. Uh, twin cam over it. Uh, the car is beautiful because the front is like a monoplace, but in the same time is a Berlinetta, 
and I yeah. think this is uh, incredible, yeah. incredible car. Now, I know this race car is, is historic for several reasons. Yes, correct. Uh, first, because, uh, uh, okay, first, only one made, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And you see, it's white, this car. Normally, the Italian cars must be raced red. with red. red sure. But why is white? Because uh, this factory, the Eldorado factory, that was an ice cream factory, paid for have this car. Right. And they call uh, a very special driver, Moss, is a V8 engine for two point liters. We have more than 380 horsepower, two speeds in the gearbox. The first only for, for start from the pit lane. And, and the second, you have a directly connection with the engine. And you know, we have wow. an estimated speed of more than 380 kilometers per hour. Come on. So yeah, but what, it's what, estimate, okay? What, what would that be in miles per hour? <laughs> um, I don't know, it's more than 200 uh, miles. Oh I don't know, it's Good. incredible, but it's estimate. I tell you one <laughs> thing, very, very funny. You see there is a dedicate here from Moss, they say, to Matteo, you are better than me, because originally in 1958, Moss make an accident with this car in the end of the race. And he he say, doesn't want to remember yes. this car very well. And he say, you have more success <laughs> to you. Okay, Sterling. He say, you have more success to you now that you have the car and you go to the car to the show than me, oh, that really? I put my life inside and I right? had a very big so problem. So he did that? Yes. Oh, yes. that's cute. Yes. That's really cute. And then, of course, a birdcage Maserati. This is a, you have to have the one, one of the, the one of the last birdcage. This is my favorite, and is the the last car that we have restored in the museum. It's a Type 63, and uh, they came from a birdcage family. Is the car is the all the birdcage family has this kind of chassis that the English people call birdcage, but in Italy we call it spaghetti chassis. <laughs> this car was driven in Le Mans um, with Vaccarelli and Scarfiotti. Vaccarelli remembered that this car was very fast, more than 308 kilometers per hour. The tale of this collection is absolutely incredible. But we also want to take our viewers right quick, right next door, and show them how this wonderful Parmesan cheese is brought to life for the world to enjoy. Car crazy! So what do we have here? Okay, you have seen the cows, we need the milk, and we need a very special pot to cook the milk for produce Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. So this is the start of the process. Yes, right in this pot we have more than 1,100 1, liters of milk, and uh, one of these pots gives to you only two wheels of cheese, are here. So each wheel of cheese, this is the cheese that we have made this morning, okay. is 550 liters of milk, and you have only 36 kilos of cheese. This, oh, really? this will be ready after two years, till today. Really? You understand? Two years. Two years, yes. Yes, age. yes because now it is soft and we need that the cheese must become hard. I wish we had smell of vision the fragrance here. It's just amazing. We it's have, just wonderful. I've never smelled anything like this. Yeah, we have more than 80,000 wheel of cheese here. <laughs> Each of these is about 36 kilo, and you need 550 liters of milk. And for control the quality, is enough this uh, simple hammer, because there is only one way to produce this cheese, and there is only one sound to check the quality, okay? It's like this. With the sound, you can understand what you have inside. Your brand in the United States. Is Bio Ombre. Is Bio Ombre. Ombre. Get this, everybody. <laughs> you can. You, you have to try this for yourself. <laughs> And you can find more information to the website that is ombre.it. You can sign the... Dot .it for Italy. Yes, and you can find all the information how you get my cheese in the United States. When we come back, we'll find out what part is on almost all cars, but is missing from the original Volkswagen Beetle. So don't go away. It's right here on... Car Crazy! So, what part is found on almost all cars, but is missing from an original Volkswagen Beetle? Did you pick radiator? Well, you were right. And according to wikipedia.org, it's one of few cars that are air-cooled. And its flat four-cylinder engine made it easier to repair and modify, which accounts for its almost cult-like following. Volkswagen means people's car. It was first sold in the U.S. as a victory wagon. By 1973, there were over 16 million Beetles, or Type 1 vehicles, produced. The last Type 1 rolled off the assembly line in Puebla, Mexico on July 30, 2003. 
and it was number 21,529,464 and was nicknamed El Rey or the King. Oh, and if you knew this manufactured bit of car trivia, oh, you must be car crazy. And now, once again, Barry McGuire. I can't begin to tell you how much we all enjoy reading your car crazy confessions that, by the way, you send to carcrazycentral.com, especially when they come from younger members of our viewing audience. This one comes from Denise Kayer. She's 15 years old. She writes, when I was in eighth grade, my father and I made a deal. If I made straight A's through middle school, he would buy me any car of my choice. I made the grades, and at the age of 13, I got my first car. We found a 1957 Chevy Bel Air four-door hardtop on eBay that someone had started to restore. It has become a father-daughter project. I love this story. Get this, dads and moms. We now exchange car parts for grades. For each semester that I earn at least a 4.0 grade point average, I get another component for my car. I really enjoy working on my car and have gained a lot of new knowledge in mechanics. After two years of earning parts, we started entering the Chevy into car shows. This week earned my first best of show. I'm still working hard to keep up my grades so that we can finish the interior and add air conditioning. I really enjoy watching Car Crazy, and I get a lot of inspiration from your show. I would like to send you photos of me and my car. Well, thank you, Denise. Wow, this, this is a wow statement. At age eight, you and your dad struck this ultimate father-child contract that, in all honesty, should be the model for parents all over the world. You're achieving academic excellence learning critical skills and disciplines while building the car of your dreams. And at age 15, you've already earned a best of show trophy. Do you have any idea how fortunate you are to have a dad like you have? More importantly, how many of you dads out there are struggling to find a way to connect with your kids and inspire them to be great students? Here's a 15-year-old girl that just told you how to do it. Grades for parts. Parents, you can change your entire relationship with your kids just by making them certifiably car crazy. Here's some really big news. Now you can upload videos of yourself and your car for the world to see on carcrazycentral.com. Send car crazy e-cards. Download car crazy screensavers. Catch up on car crazy news. Watch car crazy television shows on demand and enjoy our vast selection of original car crazy humor videos and cartoons guaranteed to make you laugh out loud. This is the leading place for car guys worldwide and it's all free right now on carcrazycentral.com where the car hobby clicks. Car crazy!